Hello everybody, welcome back to CNS Corvettes in sunny Sarasota, Florida. It's your Corvette buddy Lyle, back to talk to you about more interesting, exciting, innovative, and fun Corvette stuff. Before we get started today, if you would take the time to subscribe, like, share, super thanks, whatever you're going to do right here below the screen, I'd very much appreciate it. I'll tell you what guys, we are only 33 people away from 40,000 subscribers. Never thought we'd see the day, but we are on the edge. So. Hopefully this video puts us over and we can start counting off our way to 50, 60, who knows where we may go. I appreciate all of the things you can do for me. Costs you nothing, takes 10 seconds, but it makes a big difference to us and our channel. Thank you. Today, folks, we're going to talk about one of the major recurring problems on the C5 Corvette, 97 to 04 cars. So if you know what this is, you know what I'm going to be talking about. If you do not know what this is, <laughs> I'll tell you. This is an oil pressure sensor for a C5 Corvette. It is located at the very back of the engine block behind the intake manifold. Okay? These go bad. If you've owned a C5 for any period of time, you've probably already heard of this, dealt with this, whatever. For those of you who haven't, I'm going to teach you all about this today. So, these guys go bad internally and when they do they either get stuck open or stuck shut the little switch inside that tells the computer what your oil pressure is so if it gets stuck open it's going that's going to be too much pressure it's going to peg the gauge all the way over to 80 psi and it'll stay there no matter what you do now that doesn't mean that your engine has a problem it doesn't mean your car has a problem it just means that until you fix this you're not going to be able to know what your oil pressure actually is. On the other hand, if it gets stuck shut, that's going to be too little pressure being read through the sensor, and that's going to most likely send your car into what we call reduced power mode, or limp mode, where you can't go over about 20 miles an hour. That can be a real problem, and you're going to have to fix it right away if you want to drive your car regularly. So, one of the key indicators that these are going bad is you'll start seeing when you have an oil change done or the car's up on the lift having something done and there's an oil leak trickling down the back of the block and they can't figure out what it is because the pan isn't leaking, the rear main seal isn't leaking. Where's this coming from? It's coming from this. These actually go bad internally from GM ones and they will bleed oil out through the plug and come down here and run down the block. That's, that's the other way you're going to know. Other way, obviously the gauge will tell you, but if this starts leaking oil, you know it's on its way out. So there are a couple of different ways to access this. Some of them I'm very happy with, others eh, not so much. The way people used to do this, especially when these cars were newer and they didn't want to spend the money to go ahead and do the secondary route, is they would actually remove the wipers from the car and that big plastic reveal bezel at the base of the windshield and they would actually cut a hole in the fiberglass tray under there to access this directly. You can see a picture of that over here. And that does work. And when the cars were new and they wouldn't do it under warranty or whatever, okay, I guess. Here's the thing. The newest of these cars is going on 20 years old now. And there are several things that you can attack while replacing this, doing it the correct way. So I'm going to kind of walk you through what you need and how to proceed as you go ahead and replace this sensor. You're going to need a uh, gas line tool. It basically looks like a little X. Uh, here's a picture of it right here that you basically press into the little rubber donut where the fuel line's coming into the fuel rail. And that'll pop that loose. It'll automatically shut itself. You shouldn't have any leakage or anything like that. Then you got to go through and take the 10 bolts off the intake manifold. Um, once you do that, you're going to pick up the intake manifold and move it, shift it forward towards the nose of the car, towards the radiator. Uh, you're going to need to disconnect some vacuum lines at the rear of the intake, unplug the throttle body and a couple other wire harness plugs around there. But then you can li just lift the intake manifold off and set it on your bench. And then sitting at the back of your block, you will clearly see this guy. So clearly you want to replace this fella. No problem. Screw, oh, screw out the old one, screw in the new one. You're done. 
You do have the option, however, if you, this is something where you don't want to ever have to take the intake manifold off again and you don't want to cut holes in your fiberglass, there is a kit called a relocation kit for this. I've got it linked in the description uh, below in the video here. In fact, every tool and every part I'm talking about today, including this guy, are in that description where you can go straight to Amazon and buy them for a very reasonable price. Um, so basically, if you've ever heard of our clutch remote bleeders that are basically a braided steel line that will bring the bleed for the clutch slave cylinder up near the clutch reservoir in front of your firewall so you can bleed your clutch whenever you want on a C5, this looks similar. It basically is a hose about that long that just relocates this off to the side and to the near the uh, left rear corner of the engine where you can get to this at all times so you don't have to go through this ever again taking the intake manifold off. Now, while you have the intake manifold off, now remember this car is 20 years old at the youngest, so there's some maintenance items you can handle while that intake manifold is off. First of all, you want to replace the intake manifold gaskets. Now, unlike the old small block and big block Chevys in the past, where you had the, you know, these long gaskets that laid down into the block and you had to have you know, rubber and stuff around the ends and all this stuff to seal the intake to it, these are super simple. They are preformed little rubber gaskets that go in each aperture when you turn the intake manifold over and you just pick the old ones out, press the new ones in, and it's ready to go back together. Uh, I also highly recommend, while you have this apart, cleaning out any dirt, any dust, any sand, any debris that you find in the valley between the heads. This is also a great time to replace your knock sensors. So as you're looking at your engine with the intake manifold removed, you'll see the valley caused by your cylinder heads, and there'll be this big flat aluminum plate with these two circles in the middle of it with two wires going to a connector. Those are your engine knock sensors. They just lift right out of the block and you can replace them. In fact, I've got a kit uh, on Amazon that I've put on here for you to source. Uh, the connectors get brittle with age and heat and the knock sensors can go bad. So while you're in there, this takes about five extra minutes to change those out. That's a really, really smart thing to do. Um, once you've got your knock sensors done, your intake manifold gaskets done, and you know, might as well clean your throttle body while you got it out, then you basically just do everything in reverse. You know, set the intake manifold back on the, you know, onto the motor, but a little bit to the front so you can access all your plugs, get your vacuum lines plugged into the back of the intake, then seat the intake manifold back where it lives on the engine, put your 10 bolts back into place, making sure to torque them down nice and evenly using hand tools, not electrical stuff, and make sure then at that point you just reconnect your fuel line, which should simply snap on and the job's done and you haven't altered your car you haven't cut your car and it's finished this job for a hobbyist working with normal tools in your garage on a saturday should take about two two and a half hours it, there's not a lot of stuff to get out of the way which is really really cool you know this would have been a much bigger job on an earlier car and maybe even some of the later cars where they had extra stuff on top of the engine but basically, other than disconnecting the fuel line, taking the bolts out and unplugging some vacuum lines and some wire harnesses, it just comes right off. The reason I recommend you do all this is because all of this stuff's been on your car for so long that you're gonna give yourself a really good chance of not having to get back into the top of the engine anytime soon if all of this stuff is replaced at one time. So that is the way to replace the oil pressure sending unit on your C5. Again any of the parts and that little special uh, fuel line tool I talked about are in the description below. You can click on them and go right there and buy them. I'm not selling them. I'm just giving you the easiest and probably one of the least expensive ways to get quality products at a reasonable price on Amazon. If you have any questions or if you've tackled this job in the past, make sure to mention it in the comments below and I will answer all of your comments however quickly as I can. I appreciate you guys very, very much. Again, we're going to hit 40,000 uh, subscribers probably this weekend, and that has everything to do with you. So thank you again, and have a wonderful weekend.